second uh, Greensby consultation meeting uh, to consider the merger of West Kirby and Upton at Greensby. I'm Peter Rushton from Merseyside Fire and Rescue Service. Uh, I'm here to chair the meeting tonight. Uh, also with us tonight is the Chief Fire Officer, Dan Stevens, and a number of the senior managers from the fire service. Uh, on screen uh, is the agenda for the evening, which includes an explanation uh, of the consultation process and then some of the headlines of the Chief's presentation. Uh, this will be followed by an opportunity for yourselves to make comments and ask questions. Uh, the Chief's presentation uh, is going to cover statutory duties of the Fire and Rescue Authority, the financial challenges we face, budget decisions, the merger options that we've considered, and the proposals uh, on the Greensby Fire Station. Just to make it clear, this is not a planning consultation, but a consultation about changes in fire cover, and whether in the circumstances our proposals are reasonable. It's the fourth public meeting we've held, and obviously the second in Greensby. Uh, the others in West Kirby and Upton. And we're also holding deliberative forums and a stakeholder forum. As I just said, the Chief is now going to give you a presentation of our proposal, and then it will be over to you to ask questions. We're going to ask you to come up to the mic to ask those questions, uh, so that everybody in the building uh, can, can hear you uh, and, and take part. Uh, there are two other rooms outside there uh, full of people who are also listening and seeing the same as you. Um, um, at, at the end of it, uh, you've got a, you, hopefully you've, as many as possible have got a newsletter and there are survey forms. If you haven't picked them up, there are some on the tables at the back and we'd like you to fill them in if you can. Um, we intend to finish at 9 o'clock tonight. Thanks very much. Um, <coughs> Thanks, Peter. Vicky, can you move the slides on, please? Okay, I don't control the, uh, the presentation for Faye, so I'm going to have to ask one of my colleagues to uh, move the slides on after, uh, after I've spoken to each one. Uh, before we start, and at the risk of uh, insulting anyone's intelligence, saying that that certainly is not my intention. I need to make it clear from the outset that Merseyside Fire and Rescue Authority is a standalone statutory body convened under Section 103, sorry, Part 1 of the Fire and Rescue Services Act. We are not Wirral Metropolitan Body Council. And as the Chief Fire Officer, I, in the same way as the Chief Constable, is responsible for operational policing matters I am responsible for operational fire and rescue cover for the county of Merseyside. So we need to make that clear from the, uh, from the outset. And that is very much the context in which that I speak to you tonight and I will make clear what my position is in relation to the matter of the proposed merger. The Fire and Rescue Services Act 2004 Part 2 details the core functions of the Fire and Rescue Authority. These are the specific operational response functions. Section 6 is not up on the board. That, is, that, is related, that relates to the duty to provide fire safety advice. That is not impacted at all by the current financial challenge faced by the authority in this sense or indeed this proposal. Section 7 of the Act is our duty to respond to fires. Section 8 is the duty to respond to road traffic collisions. Section 9 is the duty to respond to emergencies as defined in the Fire and Rescue Services Emergencies England Order 2007, Articles 1 through 3, which is specifically for chemical, biological, radiological, nuclear and conventional explosive emergencies all emergencies which require the rescues of persons from collapsed structures or serious transport incidents which do not involve motor cars, i.e. trains, trams or aircraft. 
Section 11 of the Fire and Rescue Services Act details the elective powers available to the Fire and Rescue Authority. Those powers extend to us making a response to any incident where somebody may die, be injured or become ill. The same extends to animals or the environment. That is pretty much anything that isn't covered in section 7 through 9. You move the slide on please, Mickey. The Fire and Rescue Service National Framework is required under section 21 of the Fire and Rescue Services Act and that places a duty on the Secretary of State for the Department for Communities and Local Government, which is Eric Pickles, to prepare a Fire and Rescue Service National Framework. And Fire and Rescue Authorities must have regard to that framework in the discharge of their functions. You may not be able to see on the slide there the narrative, so I'll read it out. What it says is that each Fire and Rescue Authority must produce an integrated risk management plan that identifies and assesses all foreseeable fire and rescue related risks that could affect its community, including those of a cross-border, multi-authority and or national nature. The plan must have regard to the community risk register produced by the local resilience forum and any other risk analysis as appropriate. What the framework also says, and in truth is the nub of the issue for us to consider tonight, is that the Fire and Rescue Authority must hold the Chief Fire Officer or Chief Executive, which is one and the same, to account for the delivery of fire and rescue services in this instance across Merseyside. That means ultimately I, and I alone, am held to account for fire and rescue cover and it is that which is my primary concern when making uh, recommendations to the Fire and Rescue Authority. To be clear, under the scheme of operational delegation, I do not have the authority to close West Kirby or Upton and to build a new station at Greasby. Only the Fire and Rescue Authority can make that decision. Only the Fire and Rescue Authority can make that decision based on the requirements of the Fire and Rescue Services Act. I'll, take, I'll cover the point that you make later on in the presentation. I need to make that clear now, and please don't take umbrage at this comment. The Fire and Rescue Authority does not have a statutory duty to keep people in Greece be happy. That is in no way meant to be an inflammatory comment. It is true. It is, it is true. You listen to the people. What I will say is, and what I will explain in detail as I move through the presentation, the mechanism by which the people of Greasby can oppose any building of a fire station in Greasby. I will make that abundantly clear. And what I will also do, and as I've made clear on every presentation that I've delivered, I will faithfully represent the views of the people of Greasby and West Kirby and Upton to the Fire and Rescue Authority. But ultimately it is they that make the decision, not me. The reason that they are not here is because it is my professional recommendation to them that we are consulting on now. It would be predetermination for them to stand here to argue the case for or otherwise a merger. They need to consider my recommendations in an operational context along with the views of the people in the communities affected. I need to make that point clear to everyone now. Apologies for dwelling on that point. Apologies if I've insulted anyone's intelligence. But it is important to make that clear to everybody. Move the slide on please, Mickey. Let me say from the outset, there is no prospect that I would recommend the closure of any fire station to the Fire and Rescue Authority if there were any other alternative. The financial challenges that Merseyside Fire and Rescue Authority has faced did not start in 2010. They started way back in 2004. 
And there are some legacy reasons for that, which I will attempt to explain on the last bullet point of this slide. But if I deal with the comprehensive spending review for 2010, so it is that which covers this existing parliament that we are in now, so 2011-12 through 14-15, the Merseyside Fire and Rescue Authority grant, and that is the money it receives directly from government, has been reduced by 35%. Merseyside Fire and Rescue Authority relies on that grant for 70% of its income. The authority can only raise, therefore, 30% of its overall income from preset. That is what we all pay on, in addition to the, the council tax. So you see, you have. For those of you who all live in Whittle, Whittle Council take the majority of the, the money from the council tax, then the Police Crime Commissioner, then the Fire and Rescue Authority. Over the course of, the, uh, of this Parliament, the Government has limited council tax increases to 2%. What that means is that the Authority has no prospect of offsetting in any great, uh, in any great measure the extent of the direct reductions to its grant. That issue was further compounded by the fact that Merseyside has a very low tax base, the lowest in the country, and what that means is the majority of properties on Merseyside fall within band A. That means we have the lowest actual cash terms yield from council tax. The grant cuts in year for 2015-16, so take the effect as of the 1st of April next year, require the authority to make an additional £6.3 million of savings. Beyond the £20 million of savings the authority has had to make up to this point within this spending review. That is on top of significant reductions since 2004. All of the mainstream political parties are committed to eradicating the structural deficit. That means in the next parliament, whoever is in power, and assuming that the big spending departments such as health and education continue to be protected in the way that they have been, local government, of which Fire and Rescue are part of, will bear the brunt of further efficiency savings. The best case predictions that we've modelled thus far based on information in the public domain assumes that the savings challenge will rise to just over 9 million in 1617 and potentially up to 20 million by 2020. That is on top of the savings we've had to make up to this point. In the interest of balance, the point I have to make is that Merseyside is still even after these efficiency savings, the third most expensive authority by grant per head of population and the fifth on overall spend, that includes the council tax yield as well. There are legacy reasons for that which date back to the 1950s. The Fire Services Act, sorry, the Fire Services Act of 1947 was enacted immediately after the Second World War. And in the early 1950s, the Riverdale Commission undertook a piece of work to determine national standards of fire cover. These were, these were repealed in 2004. Those standards of fire cover targeted ostensibly heavy industrial risk. There were four levels of risk categorization. A risk, heavy industry, things like docks. Two pumps in five minutes, one pump in eight minutes. Commercial and medium to light industry, B risk, one pump in five minutes, one pump in eight. Suburban dwellings, one pump in eight to ten minutes. Rural, one pump in twenty. Back in the 50s, the majority of Merseyside was A risk, for reasons which we will all recall. Back then, Liverpool was the second city. It was 15 miles of operational docks that stretched from Seaforth in the north to Garston in the south of Liverpool and that was broadly replicated over here on the Will in Birkenhead and Wallasey. That of course is now all gone along with the heavy industry that was once there back in the 50s. The population of Merseyside has also decreased significantly over that time. It was 1.7 million in the 1950s, 
it is now 1.38 million. Population of Liverpool was 853,000, it's now just under half a million. In 2004, when the funding moved to per capita based, i.e. the head of population, we were by some margin the most expensive fire rescue authority in the country. And unfortunately at that point, the chickens well and truly <coughs> came home to roost. In all my time as Chief Fire Officer, I have never presided over a budget that's required me to do anything other than make significant cuts to the Fire and Rescue Authority. That is a fact. Unfortunately, we are at the point now, as I will explain further on in the presentation, where we have nothing left to go at other than fire stations and unfortunately fire engines, which brings us to this point where we're at now. Vicky, can you move the slide on, please? In terms then of the savings in the year for 15-16, we are assuming, the authority is assuming, that we will be able to deliver just under three million pounds from what we term support services. That in truth is not an accurate reflection of what we mean by support services. What we've done is very simply differentiate from expenditure that is not directly on fire stations. We're called everything else support services. This includes our community safety advocacy teams and our protection officers and fire safety enforcement. All of that is front line. It just isn't fire engines. They need to make that point. We will have to lose more than 40 of our non-uniform staff over the in year 15-16 on top of the 90 uniform staff that we had to take out over the last four years. We are assuming pay restraint to continue for a further two years beyond the, the four, not some five years now that the pay restraint has been in, in operation. There is very little prospect we will avoid compulsory redundancies. If I'm honest with you, we haven't done up to this point. What we have done is given people what I would term the Sicilian choice. They either leave on enhanced terms or we make them compulsory redundant. An appalling thing to have to do, but the reality nonetheless. The point to make is that this will and continues to have a significant impact on our organisational organizational capacity, not least to try to deliver all of the, uh, the savings measures that we will have to deliver, some of which I will speak to as I move through the presentation. Move on please, Becky. Accepting, if we can say, just under three million from uh, support services, so for non-fire station related savings, stands to reason, therefore, that the balance, 3.4 million, has to come from operational response. 3.4 million pounds is broadly 100 firefighters and senior manager posts. That will be achieved through retirement. Like we're not going to lose all of those posts on the 1st of April 2015. The authority will use reserves to smooth out those uh, post reductions through natural retirement. That is the only way we can avoid compulsory redundancies. In the very simplest of terms, the number of whole time firefighters we employ directly determines the number of fire engines we can staff, and it is that which ultimately determines the number of fire stations from which we can operate. The savings that we're going to need to deliver in 1516 will mean that we have no other choice but to reduce our stations down from 26 to 22. We will seek to maintain, however, 28 fire appliances. What we will not be able to do is maintain 28 whole time pumps. What we intend to do is to crew 24 of those appliances whole time, that is with firefighters who are there 24 hours a day on station, ostensibly through a four watch system, on two 12 hour days, two 12 hour nights and four days off. In order to maintain the number of appliances at 28, what our intention is, is to crew the remaining four appliances on what we term whole time retained. And I will explain what that is in more detail on the, uh, the next slide. If we are unable to secure sufficient numbers of our existing staff 
to undertake and retain the cover and what that is very simply is if you accept our staff do two days two nights and have four days off on the middle two days off what we will be asking them to do is for the 10 percent retaining fee provide availability over those two days to respond in on a half hour recall if our appliance numbers falls below a predetermined level i'll explain why that's our intention to do that as i say as we move through the presentation what we may need to do if we cannot secure the appropriate numbers is to recruit directly onto that system i will explain also the reasons why that would be my last resort as i move through the presentation Can you move on please becky Earlier in the year, the authority undertook a consultation exercise over our integrated risk management plan, as we are required to do. And within that consultation, as clearly we had a very good idea as to the extent of the financial challenge we would face in 15, 16 and beyond, I, as the Chief Fire Officer, advanced the four realistic options which are available to the authority in order to make the structural changes required to meet the reduction in the budget. And they are outright station closures. Right? That is something that we are pursuing in Liverpool. Station mergers, and to be clear, station mergers is station closures. I'm not in any way trying to dress that up as being anything other than what it is. What that involves is the closure of two stations to build a new station at an optimal distance in between the two stations being marked for closure. Days only clearing is another option that we could pursue. It would not help us clearly at a night time in terms of operational response, but there would be some logic to pursue that option given the fact that it would allow us to facilitate training and community intervention work during the daytime which is something we do wear a great deal of now the only other realistic alternative would be the use of community retained firefighters and if you just indulge me i'll explain to you now why that is not an option that i would recommend to the fire and rescue authority and if i'm honest this is an option that pretty much every other Fire and Rescue Authority in England recognises is far from the panacea that some suggest it is. We have not had community retained firefighters since 1992, in the true sense. Rainford over in St Helens had a community retained station. The nearest community retained station to here is Frodgham in Cheshire, and that's been long established. What community retained is, is members of the public who must live within five minutes of the fire station who give up, broadly speaking, 120 hours a week to be on cover for which they are paid a 10% retaining fee. So £2,800 a year to remain within five minutes of the fire station. Assuming I were able to find individuals who were prepared to do that, and let's take West Kirby now as being the, the, the case in point. And it may be that I could, it may be that I could do that. I would need to train them from scratch. It takes 40 weeks to train a whole time firefighter, it takes about two years for them to demonstrate competence. Assuming that I could train a crew of individuals, accepting that I would need to train a driver and an officer in charge which clearly would take a lot longer than the 40 weeks but assuming i could do that i would have them available to me for two to three hours contact time per week so even if i could acquire that level of skill we could never never maintain those levels of skills therefore and i'm in no way being disparaging to repair the same firefighters because they do a, a fantastic job all around the country but the quality of service you would receive would be nothing like that of their whole time counterparts. That is a reality. The other reality is, is that 
if we were to make West Kirby retained, we would have to assume a five minute delay from alert to mobile. The reality is that the fire engine from Upton would be on the station area within that five minutes. Thus, it is highly likely that the mobilising system would never select the retained resource to mobilise to the incident. You could view that we've got too many stations based on the uh, based on that comment. Not a view I subscribe to. As I say, I would not recommend the closure of any stations if we had any other viable alternative. Unfortunately, at this point, we do not. Move the slide on, please, Vicky. Just in terms of the uh, the public consultation meeting, station mergers were viewed by those who attended as, uh, when I use the term here, popular, and that's, that's probably not the right term to use in truth. They were recognised as being the most reasonable in the circumstances, accepting that there's nothing we can do that is going to improve our response times, which for me clearly is a fundamental issue given the fact that ultimately it is I that is held to account for your safety and the safety of the, the other 1.38 million people across Merseyside. Outright station closures were recognised as being the, the second least worst option, but there were three mergers that we identified, and uh, which, which are self-evident when you, you look at the age of our building stock. They are Upton with West Kirby and Greasby being the optimum location for reasons which I'll explain as I move through the presentation. Heighton and Weston over in Knowsley, and that would be Prescott, would be the optimum location. For those of you who know Prescott, that is by, there's a big Tesco's by the old BICC, um, with the Cables Business Park, and in St. Helens, where currently we have Eccleston Fire Station, which is by the old St. Helens Rugby League ground, on Millfields, and Parstocks Road, which is... Uh, on the A49 on the way out of St. Helens to Newton Willows and the merger there would be a new station within St. Helens Town Centre somewhere in the vicinity of St. Helens Linkway. In Liverpool the proposal is an outright closure of Allerton simply because we do not have two old stations in close proximity to each other that we could close to then build a new station. There are only two old stations at the town in Liverpool. One is Allerton, one the other is Aintree. For those of you who know Liverpool, Allerton is in South Liverpool, Aintree is in North Liverpool. Hey Becky, can you move on please? In terms of the station mergers then, the, all of the mergers and closures, and we have two consultations running at this time, that is on for here at Greasby and the closure of Allerton, they're all subject to public consultation. An individual report will be taken back to the authority. So for Greasby and for Allerton, that will be on the 2nd of February 2015. Most of the consultation has taken place. That was reported back to the authority on the 2nd of October. And my recommendation was that the merger was to take place based on the, the operational uh, the fact that that was the least impacted uh, measure we could take in Nosley and of course it doesn't just affect Nosley, it affects all the Mersey South. That's been approved and the authority now is in the process of appointing the builder and that will be considered by the Policy and Resources Committee on the 27th of November and from then planning permission will then be sought. So even if the authority, even when the authority has approved in this instance the merger, there is still a planning process to go through. And at that point, the residents of Prescott or Knowsley may well object to the fire station and planning permission may well be refused. And if that's the case, then we would have to go for the outright closure of Wiston and maintain Heighton as the key station. Right? That is the consultation process in the sense from the authority we have no control then over the planning issues. That then is a matter for the local authority. We have secured capital funding from the Department for Communities and Local Government for the merger programme. We were required to bid earlier in the year to something called the Transformation and Efficiencies Fund. 
and there was a number of criteria that DCLG outlined that we needed to meet. One of the criteria was to co-locate with either other emergency services or other public bodies. Because it is recognised that there are financial efficiencies to be realised in so doing. Makes sense. You see why that government would, would uh, require us to do that. We received the full amount that we bid for based on the strength of the bid because it met the criteria. The point I'm making is what is being proposed for Greasby and what's being proposed elsewhere is entirely in keeping with government policy. And to be clear, it's not policy that I make, this is policy that the government makes as our elected representatives. The funding therefore is secured in terms of the, the grant, because bear in mind this is one-off capital funding. I'll explain the difference between capital and revenue as I move through the presentation. Clearly we will take um, Prescott as the example, assuming planning permission is granted and we start to build. We would then, at the end of the build process, sell Height and Western and the capital receipts would go towards the expenditure on the new station, which is going to be based on the stations we've built over the last three to four years in the order of a, around £3 million. Pounds. But that depends clearly on the site, and we won't know that until the final plans are, uh, are formalised and agreed by the authority. <laughs> Any balance will be met from the capital reserve, which means that we are not going to increase the debt profile of the authority because if we did, that would have a direct revenue implication, i.e. it would cost us to then service the debt. It's like paying the mortgage. It's, uh, it's exactly the same sort of uh, analogy. What people and what everyone need to make clear here, what, what, what people need to be mindful of, a merger or indeed a station new build is not something that happens overnight. We are not likely to see construction begin in Prescott till around March 2015 at the earliest, that's all being well with the planning. That means we're not going to have a new fire station till 2016 at the earliest, probably mid-2016. Now because our budget is cut as of the 1st of April, we need to lose people because we can't afford to employ them anymore. But we won't have made the structural changes i.e. we will still have two fire stations, not just the one. So the reality is, we will have run out of people long before the, the point of 2016 when the new station is built to actually staff the fire station. That is the position and truth that we are in now. That is not because we're not employing enough people, we are employing too many, certainly more than we have the budget for, because we are a long way from catching up with the, the cuts to our budget. The issue that we have is, of the firefighters we employ, and as of today, it's in the order of around 780, should only be 764, when employing more than we need. So we should never have fire appliances being unavailable. The issue we have is, of those people we employ, not all of them are fit enough to ride a fire engine. That's not that we have high levels of sickness absence, we don't. But what we do have is quite a high number of firefighters recovering from injuries and illness who can come into work but aren't fit enough to ride a fire engine. So that has the impact of meaning fire appliances are unavailable and shifts at a time West Kirby is unavailable. That happens now. That's only going to get worse as time goes on for the reasons that I've explained. The point I need to make is, and I try to give example a little later on in the presentation, I've added some, just a couple of additional slides just to try to make a bit more sense of what's a fairly complicated issue around response times. What is for certain is if the cuts continue as they have, and there is nothing at all to suggest that they won't, then more outright closures in Liverpool, where the land set, and I'm afraid are inevitable, because we don't have anywhere left to go. From here on in. Can you move the slide on, please, Ricky? Thanks. So, in terms of the Gleesby merger option, the new station is proposed on the Frankie Road site. At this point, I will explain 
why that has come about. We approached our partners in Will, right, Will Council, as we did in Mosley, as we've done in St. Helens, and we asked them to identify sites for us that were in their ownership, that there would be the appropriate planning consent to build a new fire station. The only site in Greasby, in the area of Greasby, that was identified by Will is the site of the Library and the Children's Centre. It is already a public building. And that is the point. I'm not saying it's right or it's wrong. That is the core planning strategy for Will in terms of planning. They, of course, own the land. Therefore, it is within their gift to enter into those discussions with us. And their officers are only doing what we are directed to do through government. It's only the same as what we're having to do. Will's financial challenges are no different to ours. If there were to be a new fire station on the site, it would have two fire engines. One would be hold time, one would be hold time retained. We'll describe again very quickly. That would be potentially the staff at that fire station, although not necessarily, on the second and third row today's providing retained availability that we would recall in in the event that the number of appliances across Merseyside fell to a predetermined point. That would be 13 fire engines. And they would then respond in and stand to on that appliance to increase the availability of our whole time pumps. That would be whole time firefighters then on a whole time pump rather than the community retained alternative I described earlier. There would be training facilities on site in the same way as they are at all of our other fire stations. The plans that are out in the foyer there when, and I think Julie won't mind me saying, you, you were there when we saw the uh, first saw the plans. My first comment is, or was, why is there no tower? Uh, there would be a tower. There is a tower on all of our, all but two of our stations, and that's in the process of being addressed. It would be the same as the tower that is currently at Upton. We need to make that clear. We would need training facilities. What I would say <coughs> is, is that the, the land available is, uh, in truth, is far from ideal from my perspective. It would be a very small fire station, certainly one of the smallest that we operate. You could argue it only needs to house five people. It doesn't need to be big, and that's, that's true. But to be clear, it is not, this would not be a big fire station. It certainly wouldn't be anything like the size of the station at, uh, at Birkenhead. The dialogue that we've had with Will, and I cannot speak with any authority for Will for the reasons that I've made clear previously, is that their intention would be that any new facility would have an integrated library and children's centre. And the plans, the indicative plans at the, uh, in the foyer demonstrate there's two options there, clearly, is the, the community centre. There is one option that would include the community centre and one option that would not. What I would say is, and I, I will make this comment, and to be clear, this is the view of Dan Stevens, not the Chief Fire Officer. My personal view is, I believe probably the best chance to maintain the library would be through an endeavour such as this, not necessarily on this piece of land. Let's, let's be clear about that. That is my personal view. And what I will also say is, and I'll, I'll take this opportunity now to explain the position, if there were other land made available to us, then I would absolutely take that ahead of the, uh, the library option. The issue we have is, and the land I'm talking about specifically, which would be most uh, optimum for our response uh, purposes would be Pink Lane, towards the Sorgo Massey end of Pink Lane because of the, the Mells and Hoylake uh, issues. The, the issue that we have is that is in Greenbelt and we would require to be able to demonstrate, assuming of course we could buy that land, and I've made the point before that its value has probably increased tenfold over the, uh, over the last couple of weeks. Assuming we could buy that land, then I'll, I'll, I'll take questions at the end if you want to hold them. In terms of the, uh, the, the, the land itself, because it's in the green belt, 
we would need to demonstrate exceptional circumstances to be able to achieve planning permission. And for as long as there was a non-green belt alternative, i.e. a library site, we are advised by colleagues in Will that we would not be able to demonstrate the requisite special circumstances, the exceptional circumstances, which means therefore that as it stands, the Fire and Rescue Authority would need to pursue any planning a uh, application, assuming that the, the, the went with the, and I'll, I will be clear now, and for the avoidance of any doubt, and I think it's very important that I am honest with you all while I'm here stood in front of you, as it stands, and in the absence of any better, or rather, even less impactive operational uh, alternative, which I know doesn't exist, because I've been doing this for 10 years now, and if there was one, and the risk of sound of in any way arrogant, which believe me is not my intention, I would have identified it before now, along with all my colleagues who, who let's face it, we unfortunately think of nothing else these days, I will have to recommend this alternative to the Fire and Rescue Authority because ultimately, and as I made clear at the outset, I and I only am held to account for the operational outcomes. I need to make that clear to people. What I will also make clear is, if I had a viable alternative, then I absolutely would recommend that ahead of this site. And what I will also do, and again for the avoidance of any doubt, is to faithfully represent the views of the people of Greasby, West Kirby and Upton, because ultimately it is the Fire and Rescue Authority, as I've said, that makes the decision and not me. It is right and proper, however, that I am here to speak to you tonight and not the Fire and Rescue Authority, because they have to make the decision and I have to make the recommendation. Therefore, I have to stand up in here in front of you and say what is clearly a, a very unpopular message and I recognise that. That said, I'm sure you, none of you would want me to stand here and say one thing to you now to do something completely different to the Fire and Rescue Authority. That's not something I'm ever going to do. Huh? Any new build is very unlikely to include North West Ambulance Service or Merseyside Police. Any station design the way to be a station would clearly be designed to fit with the area. And there would be interim facilities provided during any build phase. So that's specific to the library and the children's centre. The map up here is, uh, that shows you the location. I'm sure everyone here is, is aware of the, uh, the site. But what I've done is given the same presentation to everyone, and there's people in West Kirby or to you may not necessarily be aware of where the site is. We move on the slide, thanks, Beth. The initial scope and work, and again, to make the point, the reason why we have had indicative plans made is in request or from, or in response to requests from uh, Greensby stakeholders saying, well, well, what would it look like? You can't expect us to take a view if we have no idea what it would look like. And I accept that completely, which is why that we had plans drawn up, which are indicative. They are indicative, nothing more than that, okay? Any final plans would only be determined followed from authority approval and then a, uh, a planning submission. And as I make the point on the slide there, these are planning issues and this consultation is concerned only with the least impact of operational response outcome. Thanks, Greg. So specific to the option, and we are, we are nearly finished now, so I'm, uh, I'm conscious of that. I've been speaking for quite a long time. Move to one station, release significant permanent savings, so revenue savings, year-on savings. 22 whole-time firefighter posts would be removed from the establishment permanently as a result of this, uh, of this merger. That would save £164,000, we'd achieve that through retirements. There would be additional savings on top of that, in relation to the senior officer post that would come out. Because as you take stations out, you lose tiers of, of officers that sit, sit above that. The sites at West Kirby and Upton would then be sold, 
obviously there's the grand contribution from DCLJ and any balance would be back from reserve. So there's no increase in the debt repayment, which is the point that I made earlier on. The alternative to the Greasby merger would be the outright closure of West Kirby. And I think the only realistic option we'd have then is to rebuild Upton in conjunction with North West Ambulance Service for the joint police and uh, sorry, joint fire and uh, ambulance station. The point to make is before everyone starts clapping, that would significantly increase the response times to West Kirby, which is something for reasons which I've explained that I cannot ignore. Because as I said, I'm at the risk of uh, repeating myself, ultimately I would be held to account for any incident that occurred in that area that a delay, a delay in response that I knowingly would have recommended to the authority occurred. Okay, that's not emotional blackmail, that isn't child waving, that is the reality for, for me as the Chief File Officer. One thing I made earlier is the West Kirby Appliance, irrespective of whatever happens, I need to make this point clear to everyone, and I have done it in West Kirby, we cannot staff West Kirby now 24-7 all of the time. Clearly that will only become more acute as time goes on. So at the point at which the authority make the final decision, in order to best maintain the availability of that appliance, I will then seek to make that whole time retained. Okay. In terms of the incident data, and I make the point now because I appreciate once I start getting into the technicalities that this can uh, you can start to lose people at this point. The first three bullet points are, are contextual as much as anything. I wouldn't get hung up on the fact that we've significantly reduced incidents, and it hasn't just happened by, by accident, it's happened through the hard work and endeavour of firefighters and their community safety interventions, been significant reductions in incidents over the last decade, nearly 55% across Merseyside and Upton and West Kirby have both seen falls. The fact is there are still incidents that occur on West Kirby, Upton, the station areas so across West Will. Probably the, the, the more relevant statistic if you like, which is why I put the last two bullet points up are over a five year period, it's been two accidental fire deaths, one road traffic collision fatality on Upton's area, along with six other fatalities that we have attended and we've effectively done body recoveries uh, on behalf of the police. And one accidental fire death and one RTC fatality on West Kirby's area. So the fact is, even though the number of incidents is significantly less, the risk ostensibly is the same. You think about the simple risk assessment methodology, you have likelihood times severity equals risk. The likelihood in either area is what? Low, very low likelihood. The severity is five. It's the severe death, the severest outcome. So one times five equals five for both areas. And the risk is the same in, in, in that sense. Okay, so we shouldn't get hung up on the, the fact that we've reduced incidents significantly. Move on there, please. In terms of the response implications, and what we've done is try to keep this consistent and keep it simple. We've used the same data use for the, uh, the St. Helens merger and indeed over the Allerton. If we were to move to Greasby, we would achieve an average response time of six minutes and 18 seconds across what would be the combined area. Got some maps which will hopefully show that a little bit better than just sort of the raw data as it is. And to be clear, that's been achieved by mapping the incidents of the most recent incident data. It's 2013-14, it's taken the life risk incidents on both of the areas and it maps them from the, the new location using the uh, using the mapping software that we have. It's called Map Info, and we have a, we have a root finder, not dissimilar to AA a root finder, which, uh, which calculates response times based on the actual response times that we, that we achieve. The current average response time on the West Kirby, uh, West Kirby's area is five minutes 24. That just happens to be, that's the Merseyside average, it's just coincidence. 
Upton's average response is 4 minutes 34, both of which are quicker than our 10 minute response standard. To be clear, when we set the 10 minute response standard, that, that had nothing to do with us aiming to take 10 minutes to get anywhere. That is all to do with, that is a maximum response of 10 minutes on 90% of occasions. That is all to do with the reasonably foreseeable reduction in fire appliances due to simultaneous incidents that our mobilising officer in the control room then has to try to manage to achieve the best cover across Merseyside. There's 10 key locations at which if we put a fire engine in each one of the stations, we can get to 90% of Merseyside in 10 minutes. The national average response time for dwelling fires only, bearing in mind our figures include all life risk incidents, so a stern a test, if you like, is 7 minutes 24 seconds. The average response time would be closed West Kirby Station outright, again, it's based on last year's data, so that could, if this year the incidents fell in different places, then clearly the, the, those figures would change, obviously, would be 8 minutes and 43 seconds. The, the map here is, and again, it's, it, there are keys on the on, on maps that it, I've got in the uh, that are further on in the presentation. What that's showing is is the response coverage from just having four fire stations on the Whittle. What you, I don't know whether you can see that when you've got in as you look in the southwest corner, you've got Heswell, southeast is Bromba. Northwest, uh, sorry, northeast rather than is Peck and Head. Northwest is the existing Upton station. We move on to the next slide. That shows the Greasby station, and what you can see is the grey and the there's just there's there's less red and yellow. So it, what it means is the coverage to West Kirby is is quicker, obviously from uh, from Greasby than it is from Upton. And what I'll do. Is, uh, is hopefully, uh, we've got a couple, there's two more slides, which you just, uh, so that's that's the first slide, but just a, a close up version, and then move on to see the second slide, just gives you the self evident we're going to be quicker to get to West Kirby if we move to, uh, we move a mile, 1.2 miles up the road. Probably to make it a bit easier, if we use the, an example which you can all go home and do this yourselves. If you go on to AA Route Finder, you put in the, coast, uh, the postcode for Upton Fire Station and you put in the postcode for Greasby Library via AA Route Finder, it will give you 1.2 miles in three minutes, which is an average speed of 24 miles an hour. Our map info, so our, our mobilising software, applies 20% uplift to the average speed to account for exemptions under the Road Traffic Act. Now, at the last meeting here, there was a uh, one particular individual was giving me a hard time over saying the uh, the average speed, you said broadly, would be about 30 mile an hour for a fire engine. To which you said, well, what about the blue lights? Like, that is with blue lights. And the point of what I didn't get the opportunity to respond is, is to say that an average speed means that for part of that journey, we could be doing 10 mile an hour. But for part of that journey, we could be doing 50 mile an hour. Now, be under no illusions, there is no prospect that we travel in fire appliances through 30 mile an hour or 40 mile an hour zone, uh, speed limit areas exceeding anything like 50 mile an hour. We don't. We do not do that. Our policy is we do not exceed the speed limit by more than 20 mile an hour, and rightly so. We drive to arrive. Like you, we, we cannot drive through red lights. We stop at red lights, we treat them as a giveaway. Fire engines do not have particularly fast acceleration. It takes them a while to get going again. So our average speed, use AA route finder, it would give you 28.8 mile an hour, which reduces the journey time to 2 minutes 30 seconds, which is broadly consistent with our map info prediction, which is, uh, is just slightly less than that. I'll show that on. The, uh, the next couple of slides, which uh, we'll come to in one second. Our appliances spend over 50% of their time on stations. Therefore, in these circumstances, it's reasonable for me to assume a two minute 30 or thereabouts increase in response times to West Kirby if we didn't move to Greasby. That is the reality. The point I need to make is 
is the is still on the Upton Station area. So the converse back into Upton is less acute. But whatever we do, it is going to increase response times. Make that clear from the outset. There's nothing we can do that is going to improve response. Even if we close West Kirby and stay in Upton, because the fire engine station area would be much bigger, the likelihood is at some point it will be on the old West Kirby area and an incident will occur in Upton and we'll have to respond back. The point I should make is as well the for the for absolute clarity, the mapping that we've done is based on incidents where the response was from station. So it's mapping the station responses and to make that clear because I understand it's when I've when I've responded to questions in the past and we've had three, this is the fourth of these meetings, I understand it is confusing me confusing for people to uh, to reconcile the uh, the averages and bear in mind as well these are mean averages so there are extremes we are quicker and we are slower it's it's the it's not the mode so it's not the most frequently occurring and it's not the median it isn't the the middle data set it's the mean average add them all up divide them by the number of incidents in terms of the next couple of slides these these effectively are the this is math info so that's plotting the route from Upton via Greensby to West Kirby Fire Station. Very simple, just station to station. Eight minutes, 28, uh, sorry, eight minutes, 28 seconds. So next slide, Vic. That's from Greensby to the same location, six minutes, five seconds. Next slide, Vic. So there's the difference, two minutes, 23. So it, by and large, it's the same as AA Root Finder. They say you can go home and just run that themselves, do the maths. It's that simple. It's nothing more complicated than that. And I've put those extra slides in simply just to make the point rather than to, because I can slice data up any way we like. That is what it's down to. And what you will have heard me say, I think it was at this meeting, was that our integrated risk management planning, in many respects, has more to do with AA Root Finder than it does anything else. It is that simple. Hey, Vic. So just by way of summary then, after a decade of budget reductions, the authority can no longer employ sufficient number of firefighters to keep all of our stations open. Station mergers, accepting, put aside the issues of location now around appropriateness or otherwise, station mergers do result in the least impact of outcome that we can achieve from an operational response perspective, which is what I am required to consider and also what the authority is required to the fire and rescue authority is required to consider. DCLG have awarded the authority the full amount of capital bid to fund our three major proposals. The existing library site is owned by Wirral and they are supported, the Wirral officers, clearly given the level of interest there would need to be a cabinet decision but it was only in keeping with government policy, just to make that point, not say it's right or it's wrong, that is the, the, the reality around the, the integrated community facility. As I've explained previously, the existing library site is preferable and it's the only site that we get planning from. That is the reality. That is the extent core strategy for Wirral in relation to planning. We would need to demonstrate special circumstances to achieve planning permission for any other site and we have looked at a number of sites but the ones that we would would be viable would be better than true if you say pump lane would be better given the uh, given the uh, the metals and, and oil lake coverage but as it stands that's green belt and we cannot demonstrate the exceptional circumstances we would have to go all the way down an application in relation to the library site to be refused permission. And the advice from officers in Wirral is, if the authority appealed, which my guess is they would have to, to then be able to demonstrate the uh, exceptional circumstances, they'd win the appeal. Again, because of the core planning strategy as it stands. And just finally, to make the point that the consultation is concerned with operational response, not planning issues. I understand that it is very difficult to disengage the two. I understand the depth of feeling in relation to the 
the, the, the issue of Tech 11 agrees with, absolutely understand that. But that said, the Fire and Rescue Authority are not the authority that is required to consider that. That is Wirral Council and that is the Planning Committee. The majority of people that I have spoken to from Greasby, and there is a number now and lots of community representatives as well, are saying that they recognise the logic behind the merger. It is the site they are opposed to. And, and, and I absolutely, absolutely understand that and completely, completely recognise that position. What that says to me is, the majority of people recognise the operational logic, which is that which I'm held to account for. Be assured that whilst I will absolutely have to recommend this option to the authority for those reasons, that I would also work with anyone to secure another location, as I'm sure with my colleagues in Wirral. That is not to say, however, that we may not still have to go through what could be a potentially torturous process before we could get to that point. And I'm afraid that, as it stands, appears to be the reality. What I would say is, I don't profess to be an expert of anything, least of all planning. So far greater and more informed minds than mine would need to take a view on that. But what I do know a little bit about is operational response, which brings me back to my recommendation. I'll pause at that point to take whatever questions, but before we do, I am aware that there are a number of people who were not able to, to get in the last time, who have managed to get in now, but may well be out in other rooms. And what I would ask is, is that those people are given an opportunity to ask questions ahead of people who may have asked questions previously. Thank you. Uh, thank you, um, I, I've already received a number of questions from the other room, so I'm going to take a couple of those first before I open it up to the room here. On, on, on the surface, really. Uh, and one, Dan, was wh why hasn't uh, Heswell Fire Station been included as part of the fire cover equation? Uh, couldn't Heswell become part of the process of delivering cover to West Kirby? Well, Has Heswell already does provide the second response to parts of West Kirby. And I'll take it first, listen, because we, the mobilising system selects the nearest fire appliance irrespective of the station area. Station areas, by and large, are for the purposes of admin. The issue that we have with Hasbro and Hasbro's crewing system is not whole time. It is it, ostensibly it's, it's day crewing, if you like, but it's the same people there of a, of a night and the day of a day, albeit undertaken. So it, it already operates, a, I suppose, the most efficient, albeit very difficult to sustain, uh, crewing system. The issue for Hasbro is, is, is it covers Neston. Neston is in Cheshire. Well, under section 16 of the Fire and Rescue Services Act, which is concerned with mutual assistance, it is covered by Merseyside under a reciprocal arrangement that we have with Cheshire Fire and Rescue Service. Their nearest fire station is Ellesmere Port, which is some distance away from Neston. So we make the attendance to the Neston and Parkgate area. We extend them through as far down as Williston and Burton. In return, Cheshire make the first response to Cronton over in Nosley, which is in Merseyside, but Widnes is as near and truth is, is, uh, is equally as near to that as Western is. It's not quite the same as the distances between uh, Ellesmere Port and Neston. And Cheshire also are, through there, some of the changes they are making are building a new fire station in Penketh which will cover large areas of South St. Helens and Ambold Heath. So that area is also ceded across to uh, Cheshire. So that mutual arrangement is not something we have a legal agreement with Cheshire, and that is not something that we can withdraw from. Uh, just another couple of questions from outside the room. Um, have you considered a, a corner on the Upton Bypass at Sobel Massey uh, as an alternative site? And secondly, you, 
you haven't published yet the value of the, la the land at West Kirby and Upton and what is that value? And the, um, the first, in response to the first question, the, uh, we have considered the land, and the, which, is, which is one of the pieces of land in Wibble's ownership. The, uh, from an operational response perspective, that does not give the same, uh, the, the delay in response would be longer than from the degrees we sent. Okay, as I've, as I've said, the, uh, as I've said, and I will, uh, I will share all of the, uh, the map information with you at the close of the meeting, but, right. So I can't hear them. Do you want to come down here? You want, no, no, no. You'll have to come down here, otherwise the people in the other room can't hear you. I've just handed over. I've just handed over. I've just handed over to the organizer of what you're calling a consultation, which seems to me more like a dialogue. Yeah, um, yeah. The main issue. <laughs> may, may, may I just um, the main issue, as far as I'm concerned, is. Um, there is coming up next year legislation called community planning which allows people of localities to plan their own areas and say what they want and what they don't want in their villages or their local centres. That is coming in 2015. Now, if I may say, you've dismissed sites which would be more advantageous to the fire service in the green belt and there is dispensation to allow development for appropriate purposes in the green belt with heavy uh, landscaping such as wood planting. Now, if the point that I'm making is if the people make it absolutely abundantly clear that they don't want the village centre of Greenby to become dominated by a fire station, and in other words, there is no site available, then that opens the doors to look at a whole series of other sites. Have I not made that very point during the presentation? Did I not? Like, did I not say? Like, did I not make that point? What I said is, what I said is, I used the punt lane as, as an example. That would be, in my view, a better site than the site currently that we have offered. And what I also said is that in order to achieve the required exceptional circumstances from planning, we would not, there would not, we could not have a viable alternative. And I am advised by office, I have said all of this during the presentation. What I've been advised is that as long as that alternative exists, we are not then able to demonstrate the special circumstances. You and I, you and I, are saying the same thing. No, yeah, can I just come back on that? What you're saying, I completely understand. You're saying that you couldn't get permission to get exceptional circumstances for a, a, a well-designed development that happens to be in the green belt because you're saying there is an alternative site in Greasby Village. Now I'm saying, if the, the community of Greasby do not want to see their village dominated by a fire station, then that site is no longer available, which opens the door to us to look at other sites outside yeah, yeah. Greasby. Yeah. <laughs> which, which is exactly the point that I've made. And what I've said to you is, and I think I used the term, the, the, uh, said but it would have been something along the lines of there is there is a degree of bureaucracy still to the fire and rescue authority me in the first instance and then the authority to go through before we could get to that point because as it stands rightly or wrongly and again i, I don't disagree with what you're saying the fact of the matter is the advice from women officers within the planning department is that 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 site is appropriate for a fire step. That is not my view, that is their view. Okay, well, we are having a consultation, and if the people of Greasby do not want to see this, and we get that message across to our councillors and to officers, then we're on your side. You've convinced us 
of your need to be in a central location. You've taken a long time to convince us with a lot of facts uh, and figures. But the point is that we're on your side. We're going to find a side for you. We are saying the same thing now. But as it stands, and I need to make this point absolutely clear, and I'm not in any way, I'm not being in any way critical of our colleagues from Will, the planning officers, because in the same way as I need to make operational recommendations based on my primary legislation, they are bound by the extant Will planning strategy. And it is that the siting briefly for a fire station doesn't include isn't included in any strategy whatsoever of the planners or anybody else. This has completely come out of the blue. I think it's a done deal. But if we can help you to say the site in Green B is not available, then we're all going to work with you to find a site which is acceptable to all of us. Can I make a comment in response to that? I'd like to thank the gentleman for making that comment. <laughs> to be clear, I would, uh, I, I would welcome the opportunity. I'm not sure I can make this any more clear than two. I would welcome the opportunity to be able to consider sites other than the library in particular and make the point again, I'm not sure I can make this any more clear, Pump Lane in particular, towards the junction, the roundabout, the, with the uh, West Kirby Road at uh, just to uh, just to the west of Sorghum Massey, would be an even more optimal location than the library, but it is in the Greenbelt. So if the people of Greensby do not want a fire station in Greensby Village, then that must be removed as an option. Unfortunately, that is not within my gift to do that, nor is it in the gift of the Fire and Rescue Authority. The, can I come back on the, uh, the second point that was uh, those people who've requested the, uh, the value of the land in Upton and West Kirby, the value of those sites, that information has been exempted under the, uh, the, under the local government act. The reason it is exempted, the reason it is exempted is because that would then show the Fire and Rescue Authority's hand at the point it came to uh, try and sell the land. Because clearly the Fire and Rescue Authority is duty bound to achieve the best price it can for that land. That is the reality of the, of the advice that we were given by the clerk to the authority. Right, take that off with the clerk of our authority then, because in truth it's not my decision. Okay, I got, I got no, no, please don't stand there. The people in the other room can help you. I come from the other room. Well, you may have come from the other room, but you can't speak from there. They can't hear you in there, so there's no point. Going back to a point that's only a few moments ago, how much did the fire authority go to have to do? And how much did the council go to make out of Do they have a financial interest in this? The council own the, the land. Okay. Now, as it stands, and not in any way trying to avoid the question, it's not for me to say that that would be Will's decision. And I need to make the point here again that the Fire and Rescue Authority is beholden to Will in these circumstances. Will own the land. Now, what we would appreciate that we're alone with that, but you're going to have to pay World Council for that land, aren't you? There are a number of options, there are a number of options potentially that could result from this proposal in terms of the land. One would be that we'll retain ownership of the land and lease the land to the Fire and Rescue Authority, which would be my view around that, that would be a, a peppercorn rent, so, which is normally around a pound a year. Bearing in mind that for Will, the proposal assumes a library and a children's centre, which the Fire and Rescue Authority might build and take the whole cost for, in which case the cost would be in excess of £3 million, which would be the cost of the fire station only. And in those circumstances, we may be given the land and we may charge rent to Whittle to retain their their place in the, in the that's one option. I'm not saying what it would be, it's not within my gift to decide that. The other alternative is is that Whittle make a capital contribution 
to the cost of the library and the children's centre and then we would just pay rent in the same way as I've described previously. The fact is, until such time as that is presented to Will to make the decision on, it's not I can't answer that nor in two can the fine rescue authority. Okay. Would you like to come up? Yeah, thank you. I don't know how many people have actually studied the meeting of the Merseyside Fire and Rescue Authority on the 2nd of October 2014, with the report number CFO-101-14, which says, Item 26, alternative to merger if strong public opposition to the proposal. However, if the specific consultation on the merger was strongly opposed by the local community, the alternative option to deliver the required savings to ensure a balanced budget would then be outright closure of West Kirby Fire Station while maintaining the station as open. Yeah. 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 Let me respond uh, to that. That is absolutely correct. I wrote that before and I made that clear. The Fire and Rescue Authority, of course, would need to consider this, their statutory duties. And in agreeing to that, then they would be knowingly incurring a delay in response to West Kirby that could be avoided if they went with the merging option. Ultimately, that is a matter for the Fire and Rescue Authority, as I've made clear on a number of occasions. The point is, I am the one who's held it to account for the recommendations. If the authority elect to close West Kirby outright and remain in Upton, against my recommendation, then they can't hold me to account for anything that may happen thereafter. Can I just make I a point? Uh, no, 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 well, just be polite, please. You need to be polite to other people. And you spoke at both of them. Let other people speak now. I mentioned about the finances. I contacted Cheshire County Fire Brigade about what they're doing with you. I've also looked at reports that you, the Fire Authority, have submitted to the about response times, about response times, which are crucial to your operational requirements. As I said, I took the trouble to go to two meetings and now I'm being denied an opportunity to respond no, because of... Be no, 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 it's just weird. Yes, okay, right. Yeah. I've listened to you like everybody else and quite frankly, I, you know, I'm wondering why you're here because you're not telling us that we can make a case you just simply saying, listen to your case. And why haven't you said this? Why didn't you say that you applied for planning permission to build a tower in Greasley in January 2013? Let me have Just like, Taylor is the Deputy Chief Executive. Do you want to confirm me to step up? I'll read it. Uh, just to confirm, the fire authority has never applied for planning permission in Greece at all. Yes, I'll, you're quite right. I'll read it to you. This is the planning permission. Um, the fire authority. The location is up to a community fire station, Arrow Park Road, Upton. Proposal, demolition of existing training tower and construction of steel training tower in a revised location. If I can save you reading out the, the whole uh, article there, that was to do with revised location, not for up <coughs> You're not going to build a spike, you're not applying that to build something. Okay. Already there. Right. Now, like, let me let me be very clear. The tower, the, the brick tower at Upton was condemned. It was demolished and it was replaced by the steel tower. 
That is what that relates to. No, it is. I'm telling you that's what it is. Drive down to Upton now and go and look at the steel tower that has replaced the brick tower. Okay. That relates to Upton. Okay. I, just, I just want to say something else. Just when, I, when I was... A, when I was a, just when before I was you do, and it's it, please do not come up and make comments which you know not to be true. I'm reading really from the planning. No, and you said that we'd applied for planning permission in Greensby. That clearly relates to Upton. That's the implication. No, it's not. No, said, it is not. From what I heard you say, so now that's game. the implication. You I'm said you, you totally support the move into Greensby Village. You said that all the way through, with a little bit of fringe on the side. When I was a child living in Manchester, I was going to school in the city centre. And they built a fire station in the city centre. But one lunchtime, when I'm walking down the road, I see a fire engine come out, run over a man, and squash him. He's dead. And now you want to talk about putting a fire station in the middle of a village. I'm sorry, there's a lot of more people. But let me say this to you. There will be a judicial review if the application goes ahead. And now I'll be funding it properly. And after you just see the news, can I just say that at the last meeting we formed a queue and people just came and made a queue and that was very evident that people wanted to speak and, and you were all very ready to speak. If you haven't spoken before, would you like to come out? Sorry, I'm not very comfortable coming out front and speaking as a nice big chap here. I'm just a resident in Holy Lake. One, I really don't want to lose the library in Greece. Sorry for calling my girl up in here. I think it's absolutely disgraceful for kids in the day. Definitely need the facility of library. Um, we've got a little tiny bit of green, the trees, a little bit of TV centre of the village. Why would we want emergency vehicles coming out yep. into the middle of the village? <laughs> um, also, my question was the one we the value of West Kirby and Upton, which should be in the public domain, it should be transparent and it isn't. So my voice is going to be very nervous. And that's what happening from the edge. As I've uh, said, we need to yeah. take that up with the clerk to the authority to say that why he says that that should not be made public. Yeah. That's very, very important because that's why West Kirby is getting knocked down. It's cheaper to build it in Greece. It's better land development in West Kirby. It's money and charity. Uh, Darren, just a, a, a couple of questions from this. Uh, one suggesting there's an RAF site which is Brownfield, and uh, have we considered that in Greece? I'm assuming that's the Pump Lane site. <laughs> Will have, will have, uh, as I've said previously, Will have made it clear that all the land in the vicinity of that area is in the green box. Um, another from outside, a doctor here, uh, finds your comments very offensive. But you do not need to say that he doesn't have to keep the people of Greensby happy. That's, that's fine, but it doesn't make it any less true what I'm required to do. Okay. Okay, then. Hi, Dan. Um, am I hearing you right? Did you say that if we do go to Greensby Community Centre, take that away, put a fire station in, does the government intend to do that? What the government have done? Under the Transformation and Efficiencies Fund, we are required, and <coughs> were required, to bid for capital funding. Previously, we were allocated capital as a matter of course, in addition to our revenue funding. What has happened over the last couple of years is we've been required to bid into a, effectively a, as I said, transformation and efficiencies fund, and the government has set criteria, all of which is that we ought to we need to work with other agencies, emergency services, local authorities, and so forth. On the basis of the bid that we have submitted around interoperability. The mergers so clearly delivering efficiencies and increasing the number of the retaining parties we have. We've been awarded the full amount of money for that bit, based against the government's criteria. Can it be that? Uh, obviously, 
that was declared fair. But please do not come into a meeting justifying response times as the major reason that you have made this decision when it really is a budget that you've been able to obtain to make these decisions. It's, it's not that. Let me be clear. Let, let, let me be absolutely clear. What we're talking about here is, is capital spending, so the one-off spend to build the new fire station. I made it clear from the outset that I wouldn't recommend any station closures if we had another alternative. The fact of the matter is we don't because of the scale of the financial challenge that we've faced over the last decade and made it clear it didn't just start in 2010. The fact is we need to make the revenue savings. We only do that by reducing firefighter numbers. Therefore, we have to make structural changes, i.e. we have to reduce the number of fire engines and therefore fire stations. The other reason we need to reduce fire stations is because that then allows us to deliver further savings from what we term support functions. So for example, if we only have 22 fire, engine, uh, fire stations instead of 26, we can reduce our ICT costs, we reduce our maintenance costs. Not huge amounts, but they all make a contribution. Let me assure you, this is, this is financially driven in the sense of revenue, not capital. But ultimately, what I'm trying to do and you must recognise this, clearly the majority of people do recognise, what I am trying to do is to deliver the least worst outcome. That is what I am trying to do in the operational response sense across all of Merseyside. But the truth be told, you started this steam train, it's now a, yeah, sorry, the truth be told, you started this steam train, it, it, there's now no turning back, the decisions are made, yeah, yeah the, the decision. If you want to be honest, if, if, if this was a true consultation, right. we would have representatives from Willowborough Council here. Yeah. 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 We, we, we would have a, a proper consultation where you know that you've had conversations with, with the council behind closed doors to secure the funding. And I, I, I honestly say, just remember where you are, you're in the hands of the law here. And, and I urge you. To, to please be honest with the people of, of Greasby, Hoy Lake, West Kirby, who come here today, and, and you know what? I have to make decisions on, on branch closures. I, I, I really do. I understand how difficult it is for you. However, we all pay council tax. I work for a bank. When, when I make those decisions, people have a choice. Let me know my bank's work. We don't have a choice. We have to trust you to go and do the right thing. For these people, let me, let me be clear. In the operational response, I think, does, does, does anyone think we can get into the argument here? That, and, and clearly, people do. The majority of people I've spoken to, gentlemen previously made the comment to say, We recognise why you would want to merge the two stations. People have said that, did they? And clearly, it's financial because we've got to make savings. But my primary concern here, and that which I'm held to account for, is around the operational response outcomes. <coughs> the easiest thing in the world for me would be to stand up here and just to say, I shut up to I should shut my scary rather, a much easier thing to do. But I would be knowingly then <coughs> incurring at least a two, two and a half minute increase in response times to West Kirby. That is the reality. That's the reality. What about acting people? You're going to respond. And I've made, I made. also made the point that the time, whatever happens, the times on Upton's area are going to increase. But Greasby is still on the Upton station area. And I can demonstrate that ad nauseum through the data sets that we can produce and the maps that we can produce. Because it is the reality, and, and nothing is going to change that. Thank you, Chief Farrell. Can I just go back to your report for the 2nd of October? When you said the alternative to merge, this is paragraph 26. You say, however, if the specific consultation on the merger was strongly opposed by the local community, can I ask you, when you wrote this report, what your definition was of strong opposition? 
How much more do you think we need to do? Have I, have I, or have I not said I will faithfully represent the views of the people of Greensby on a number of occasions? Thank you. Right. Have I said that? Thank you. For the fire authority, and you have put a three paragraphs in it to say, I will do another option. There is another option if there's strong opposition. Now, you must, when you wrote the report, have a view in your mind because I mean, authority must have questioned you on it. What do you mean by that? Are you intending holding a referendum <laughs> of the residents of Greensby to ascertain whether you've got strong? Opposition or not? We've got a server, right? We have a server, which, and the outcomes of that server, which is the opportunity, which we're giving that out to everyone, and give everyone the opportunity to fill out the server. We've advertised it widely online, and we've even said that people don't have access to the internet. If they write in, then we'll send it out. And what we'll do is faithfully report back the views of the people of Greensby, Upton, West Kirby, and anyone else who fills out the survey. Well, I made that point clear. Made that point clear ad nauseum. Made that point clear ad nauseum. But what I've also said is, the Fire and Rescue Authority are required to consider the operational response implications because their statutory duties are the Fire and Rescue Services Act. Now the authority can, the authority can, because it is they who make the decision, not me, as I've said, ad nauseum, they can elect in the face of public opposition in Greensby to elect to say we won't proceed with the Virgin option. Instead, we will close West Kirby. The authority can do that, and I've made that option clear as you can see. So they can do that. I don't make the decision, the Fire and Rescue Authority do. But you come into your report, if you and if I read it correctly, if there was strong opposition, you would then go down the route of the other option, which is actually to actually maintain the station up and the close West Kirby. Now that was what the re that's what your report said to the fire authority. All I'm asking you is all I'm asking you is, what did you have in your mind when you wrote these paragraphs that said this is strong opposition? compared with, say, weak opposition. What, what, what was it? Well, it isn't for me. To, ultimately, it is a matter for the Fire and Rescue Authority to take a view on that. It's not, I don't make the decision. I don't know how many times I can make the point. I am an officer. Right? I make the recommendations based on my professional judgment, which, by the way, there are, by the way, there are lots of fire and fire chief fire officers around the country who are also recommending mergers. Lots of authorities are having to consider these sorts of these sorts of issues. In the end, it's a matter for the authority to make the decision. Okay, final, not me. Final, final point only. When you presented the report, did the fire authority ask you the question I have just asked you? How you would judge? strong opposition. You're conducting this consultation, not them, which you made quite clear. Did they ask you the question at the meeting or which you presented this report? The Rescue Authority accepted the recommendation of the so report. No one asked you, no one asked you, just to make it clear to everybody here, no one asked you what strong opposition would actually be. I cannot recall that question being asked. Why would they ask me that? They need to consider the report on the 2nd of February 2015. Mr. Stephen, um, I, at the start of this consultation process, I had an open mind. In order to help me make up my mind one way or another, I attended the earlier meeting here and also attended the meeting at Hoylake. As a result, in order to try and get further information, I did four things. I sent an email to Mr Burgess, the Chief Executive of Willow Council. I spoke to senior officers of Chester County Council. I rang Mr Osborne's department in London, the Treasury, and also Mr Pickle's department as well. 
<laughs> well, I'm still waiting for a reply. Um, <laughs> but the, in relation to um, <coughs> the, I also looked at, and this is where I'm really coming from, the operational requirements. I looked at reports submitted to the fire officer, to the fire authority, by the fire service. Namely, one was called a rapid approach, a risk assessment program, and the other two of other reports were uh, commu community safety plans for often in 2012-2013-14. In, in the reply I got from Mr. Verdi, uh, I asked Mr. Verdi, when I attended the meeting, the first meeting here at Greasby, you said, and I quote your words, Greasby was offered to you, and the word you used was offered by Whittle Council. So again, I had an open mind. I sent the email to Mr. Burgess, asking the question. He referred it on to David Armstrong, and he's, um, Armstrong said he's the chief officer responsible for the assets of the council, and he said. Um, the council was approached by the fire service and asked to identify council-owned sites in Greasby only. In answer to another question, Mr. Armstrong stated that in terms of, finan in terms of financial arrangements, there have been no agreements with the fire service. That, I'm going to just confirm what you said. In, in relation to the land, nor any of the land be sold. So that was that. As far as the Treasury was concerned, they confirmed what you've been telling us, that until 2020, when they reckoned the um, deficit, um, and irrespective of whoever gets in power, these, these cuts will carry on, and you've got to respond to them. And now come to the two reports that... Um, I'd no, like to get to question. Well, right. Well, many, 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 you've been there. Well, what I'm, no, what, no, what, 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 what I'm saying is that, what I'm saying is that, um, just bear with me a second. In relation to the um, rapid response uh, risk assessment program, within this very far reaching report, it states that the assessment process involves a comprehensive approach to research and requires expertise both from within and outside the fire service. In 1998, a study was undertaken by ENTRA, an outside organisation on behalf of the Home Office, to cover risk criteria. Using national statistics over a period of time, the study stated that there is little difference in death rates between attendance times of 1 to 5 minutes and 6 to 10 minutes. Another uh, set of data, um, an American set of data, used the international criteria and again confirmed the probability of death of persons involved in fire through the same conclusions. There is a little probability of death in response times of 6 to 10 and 1 to 5 minutes. The fire service concluded that taking all this research taken into account, Merseyside Fire Service intend to get first fighting responses, uh, resources to incidents with ten, within 10 minutes. Now, I use the 10 minutes because at Hoylake, I asked, the, you mentioned Wallace uh, was closing. I'm not saying for any reason at all, it was likely to close. Yeah, it likely to close. I'm, I, I'm not trying to get any clap about this at all. And I asked who was going to respond to Wallace and you said Burton Head within, and you said within 10 minutes. You definitely said 10 minutes. So that, so right away, it brings 10 minutes into the risk criteria. Now, as far as as far as the Cheshire County is concerned, concerned I, I spoke to two officers at Cheshire County Council, and I said to them, well, my own thoughts were about Cheshire County Council was that in all of the discussions about Willow Fire Station, what fire stations? One station appears to be flying under the radar and going unnoticed, namely Heswalt. Although, although a charge on Willow Council taxpayers, this station also helps out 
at, out at Nesta, which comes under control of Cheshire County Fire Service, and that's why I contacted their head office. Initially, as part of their 2012 consultation process, Cheshire identified five potential sites. They served it up in, in 2014. Four are definitely firm, but the one at Heswell is remaining, the option still remains open. When I said to the person I spoke to, what would happen if Heswell failed? I then got a reply, can I call you back? So mm. anyway, when I, uh, the person then said that they contacted Merseyside Fire Authority and there's no, there's no prospect of them closing Heswell initially at all. But however, and these are their words, not mine, they intend to seek a legal agreement to make, this co uh, uh, to make it a formal contract. Now, in relation to... to Just stop you there. The, 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 we already have a section 13, 16 of Eames, but uh, who were you speaking to from Cheshire? No, is it you? I you talked to someone in the county council there, you said. No, 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 the fire authority. No, I spoke so, to the senior members. As I said, I spoke to two senior members of Cheshire Fire Service. You, you therefore would know that we already have a long-standing yeah. section 13, 16 arrangement with them. What they said to me was that in the event of uh, <coughs> uh, um, in the event of the agreement lapsing, what they would do, they would build a station at Nesting and they would use a second fire tender from Ellesmere Port to service to service Nesta. What I'm coming to in the in the discussion so far, we've all been looking at uh, Greasby and Upton. As far as I'm concerned, using the ten minute criteria, this brings Heswell into the consideration. And bear in mind that both Up Upton and Heswell are existing fire stations. Why in heaven's name do you want to sort of, sort of choose briefly? I've already answered the, the question in, in detail. The, the existing 1316 arrangement that we have with, because of what we're doing over in Nosley and St. Helens, it becomes more, it becomes more Operation, the, the operational imperative around the 1316 with Neston becomes more important in one sense to us because we need the cover from Cheshire over in St Helens and Nosley. What you've got to understand is we cover all of Merseyside. I cannot specifically favour West Wirral over any other area within Merseyside. And that is, the, that is the reality, and the position is exactly as I've explained earlier on in the presentation. The report to which you refer, the rapid report, is 10 years old now. That's been superseded by two reports from Green Street Berman, commissioned by DCLG and my colleague Mark Rowe. I believe has a copy of the, uh, certainly the FBU have drawn some, uh, drawn some data from that report which does correlate and confirm the relationship between increased response times and deaths, not just in fires, but in road traffic collisions. That is the most up-to-date research, and Mark may well refer to that if he comes up to speak. But in terms of the Cheshire position, that is exactly as I've explained to the meeting earlier on. Sorry. back to the, uh, the incident slides. You see there was 590 incidents in Upton, 
200 uh, 220 I think from West Kirby if you put them together you are probably still looking at between two and three incidents a day over the 24-hour period that is not uh, that is not a, a significant number of incidents the issues that you're raising around the uh, the dangers from fire appliances really you know, we have fire uh, fire stations all over the county you know, and, and clearly we uh, the, the risk from a fire engine is no greater than the risk from any other form of vehicle traffic and 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 that is a reality From your own um, perspective, you said yourself that you don't feel police safe um, if you are asked at those to those in the station. You'd rather have some blame, but because um, it's been identified by the council as being a, a place to be built, you've got, you've got to look at it. But I don't think that the um, planning commission uh, has looked into it properly because there's several grade one listed buildings in the village and they have their own um, planning criteria um, so maybe that would be a leverage for you to, to push the funds I think if the, again just to, as the gentleman who spoke first said, uh, until such time as Wirral, formally Wirral officers or indeed the authority, whatever point that is, until such time as the Greasby Library site is no longer an option, then we cannot discount that. The minute that it is discounted, then we can pursue the other, the other options. I'm sure you should ask the well, you know, if, if to, just to reassure you, I, I, I'm having regular conversations with officers in Whittle. The, the Whittle officers, as the gentleman has, uh, has, has said previously, have been written to as well. As it stands, you know, the, the position of the Wirral officers is as, as it's always been. The site at Greasby falls within there. The, there is no planning limitations in relation to a fire station. The, uh, just to reassure everyone, you know, we're, we're, we're saying the same thing. Say the fact is, the fact is, until such time, I would happily pursue. I would happily pursue another option. But as it stands, we don't have one because because the library option is in the ownership of will sits within existing planning, and therefore, until such time as it isn't, then we have to pursue that, and that that is the reality. Now, it may be that at some point in the future, if the authority approves the recommendation to do, to go for the merger. Then the planning committee would then at that point that's, that's the point I made right at the beginning that is your opportunity to make those very arguments we're just not the right people to make them to. I know that you're obviously talking to the, to the council and the planning people surely they can then look at the plan to see if cultural heritage comes into it at all and that's exactly what they've done and their view is that the there is no planning restriction around the fire i can't I just keep saying the same thing to people. It's that, that I'm, I'm, I just have to refer you back to what I'm saying. They speak to the Wirral Planning Officers yourself and they will tell you the same thing. Because it's not their consultation, it's ours. It, it you made a big thing about operational response times. My colleague here who's doing the, the signing, is anyone using the signing because she could do with a break? <laughs> is that a... Yeah, run. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yeah. Okay. Apologies for that. You said, you said that operational response time would be your main criteria. Have, uh, you've also gone about the computer <coughs> simulation? Yeah, modeling, yeah. Has anybody ever driven the route? 
because I'll guarantee you, if you go out there at 8.30 on any weekday and try to get out of that car park where you want to build your fire station, it'll take you at least five to 10 minutes to get out onto the road and at least another 10 minutes to get past the red, the, the, the top man. The modeling software is based on actual incident responses from Upton and from West Kirby to the, and, and therefore on the West Kirby station area clearly for, for a number of those, those like this incident. So what it does is it looks at the actual response times, which is where we get the averages from. So all I can say is, is those figures that, that the, that's not me that comes up with them, it is the, uh, it's our data analysts. Those figures that they come up with are based on actual responses that have been made in the, in, in the, the past year. You said earlier that you cannot cover West Kirby Fire Station probably at the moment. Is that true? Is that what you said? I said it on occasion. On occasion, so for shifts at a time, yeah, what I said was, being, shifts you cannot at a time. cover it. You must be covering from Upton. We are, you're on the So yes. you are covering from Upton. That's what yes. you just said. Yes. On so occasion, on occasion. To do that. Yeah. Yes, I've not, just said. And I've not said it isn't. And I've not said it isn't. And that option is in the authority report. So I've not tried to hide anything from anyone. That option is there in the report. But what I have said is continually is to cover West Kirby from Upton rather than Greasby will increase the response time. And what we're trying to do, and we're trying to change the situation for the better in terms of response. That's exactly what we're doing. Yeah, you said you're going by computer planning. Uh, and nobody's ever driven the room. So I'll tell you what, I'm 66 years old. One of your officers meets me in the car park tomorrow morning. I will run to Upton faster than you can drive. <laughs> Let me be clear. Let me be clear. When you say that no one's driven the route, like clearly the response times that we see on the presentation are from actual journeys to incidents. So clearly, clearly somebody has driven the route. Hey, thanks, Al. I've been put on the clock, not too much of your time, so uh, I'll be brief. I'll declare my interest. I'm Mark Rowe, I'm the Brigade Secretary for Mayside Fire Brigade Union, and I've now attended all of these meetings. And what I would urge you to do is not to be, uh, I appreciate that, but there's some important points that need to be addressed here. Um, and believe me, I'm not here as a, chief, as a, a cheerleader for the Chief Fire Officer. The issue is the attendance times. And the facts and figures that were quoted before, when we talk about one, one to five minutes, in the, in the, in the, well, it's a relevant point if you just let me finish. The issue is, is that attendance times are significant. They do count. I'm a 27-year uh, firefighter. There's other professional fire officers in this room who have all, and this isn't shroud waving, this isn't um, emotional blackmail. We are pull people from rooms, and it's not just us that say this, North West Ambulance say that if he'd remained in those rooms uh, for a longer period, they wouldn't be alive now. That is the fact of the matter. Now we hear, absolutely, I hear you loud and clear, fantastic turnout at all these meetings, and I don't think anyone could misinterpret what you're saying. I attend the authority meetings, and I'll certainly be making uh, your views known as well, because it, it's been a fantastic turnout. But what I will say is, what we're tending to do here is left the people responsible for this off the hook completely, and this is the political party. It doesn't matter whether you're a Labour voter, if you can save your voter. They've smashed the fire and rescue service on Merseyside for over a decade. Don't let them off the hook. Everybody here, none of this can go ahead if the council that refuses to release the land. And it really should be. I'd like to know why there's no councillors here and yeah. representatives. <laughs> why aren't they here? Yeah. Uh, parts of the pl who, who are the people are responsible to release the land? Why haven't they attended this consultation? Yeah. 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 Which is based on 
the appropriateness of the recommendation in the context of operational response. You are absolutely correct, as I've agreed with you and a number of speakers now, we've got up to make the same point. If the council elect not to release the land to the authority, then this is all academic. The issue we have is, of course, we have to go through that process to get to that point, which is the point I've made now on more occasions than I care to report. Really. At the end of the day, we need to lobby the councillors and say we don't want that land released. Which has been my point from the outset. This is not a planning issue. This is about this is the Fire and Rescue Authority's consultation around operational response. You have effectively a second bite of the cherry, which is a planning application. So yes, absolutely, that's the that that is the position. I honestly don't know how the planning. <laughs> There would, there, there would be, I assume, there would be a, a period of consultation and a job in which people could object. I'd assume that's what happens. I don't know what's the answer. We don't have a lot of faith in that going our way. Good evening. Um, I'm Wendy Clements. I'm one of the councillors. Councillor Tom Anderson is up at the back. We were holding back because we wanted to give people a chance to speak. I want to say first that we're all very glad that we've got a Burnside Fire and Rescue Service. In another part of the country, one of my family was very glad of the Fire and Rescue Service. So let's be glad that we've got them. Let's appreciate what they do for us. We're, so yes, yes, so let me breathe. <laughs> let me breathe. The point then is, Dan has told us what he needs to do to uh, keep people safe. He's told us that he needs to make a station merger. The only problem we've got, and I think he's got two, but he's in a difficult position, it shouldn't be where it's currently looking to be. That's why, as your councillors, we've started a petition which is saying to the council, please do not give this land to the fire and rescue service. Let's find a way around this problem. We're here, we've got the contact, you can get hold of us any which way you can. And we've done our best to circulate this to everybody who agrees to. But we are sure that there's a good job being done here. Thank you. I'd like to appreciate the council. Thanks very much. We've only got five more minutes, so I'm, I'd like to give the people sort of a chance to ask a question. Thanks. Sam talked an awful lot about operational readiness, correct? And the fact that obviously moving the station this way helped West Kirby. You've never actually told me, maybe you've told the residents of Upton, what effect moving the station down here has on the extremity of the church. Upton wood church site. I'm assuming that it's going to take a bit longer to get to them. Yeah. And how many houses are we talking about? Are there more? <laughs> If you look at the, the maps that I showed previously, what you'll see is, is the, the coverage from Birkenhead Fire Station in to, uh, to Upton. But I've made it very clear from the outset, if you think back to the slide where I had the existing average response times and then the predicted averages for the merger, clearly it's going to take longer to get to Upton and West Kirby. Made that clear from the outset. There is no outcome here that is going to improve our response times. That is for sure. But even if we just close West Kirby, the response times in Upton will increase. It is harder to give a definitive prediction because you, you're almost trying to map back from an incident, if you like, in you only have one fixed location realistically to map from, if you like, from the, say, the West Kirby fire station back to incidents in Upton. So it is going to increase the response times on Upton's area. Probably the easiest way to describe this is, beyond West Kirby, there is the River Dig. Beyond Upton, there is Birkenhead, there is Wallasey. Beyond Birkenhead, there is Liverpool City. All of those assets are available to move this way. There is nothing to come in that way. I'm really oversimplifying it, but that's that's basically where we are, where we're into. Uh, you keep on saying that you're responsible for the safety of the people of 
we're on a mode to say, which so we get closer. Sorry, you keep on saying that you're responsible to the people of Wirral and Merseyside, and we can all appreciate that. You're talking a lot about response time. Um, you've said that you'll make the recommendation for the fire station at Greasby, even though it isn't ideal for you, you've already admitted that, and it's not ideal for us. So why won't you make the recommendation for the Pump Lane site? Because in order for me to do that, the Greasby library site no longer, can no longer be an option. So I suppose to, to, to talk this through in simplistic terms, in order to make it an option, my view as it stands is, and as bureaucratic and as nonsensical as this may appear, I would have to go down the route of recommending the library site for it to then be knocked back, either at planning or by will of council. No longer an option now, then we can go for pump lane. I'm not sure I could make that any clearer. Can you take forward the recommendation for the pump lane site as well when you recommend the Greasy site? an option because I couldn't get planning permission for it. You, you must understand that I can't recommend something to the fire rescue authority that I know cannot be delivered. So I would have to go through the, the process of effectively taking the, the library the to the... The community is very keen to work with you. If you don't work with us, we can probably get what you want and what we want at the same time. Comes back to, we're saying the same things. Unless, exactly. like, exactly. we are, but unless you may well be able to influence Whittle's planning policy far more than I can. And, and we'll no, do but, everything and, we can. And, and I, would, I would urge you to do that. I don't think that would be a wonderful outcome. The fact is, as it stands, I can only go on what I am being advised by Whittle's planning officers. I, you, you know what, if you want to achieve that outcome, you know what to do. I'm only taking these two because we're going to have to turn I'll try to keep it very brief. Um, it's probably not addressed to you, it's probably to Wendy and Tom. Why are we looking at green belts on Pump Lane when there's brown belts available for industrial parts? Surely we could do brown belts? Yeah. 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 The old the old the old the houses are then even further on and there aren't any houses there, we're not going to be bringing in children, there won't be any destruction to anybody. The brown belt obviously that's going to be cheaper than green belts. Would you like to uh, my colleague is uh, is an expert on all things challenging this business as well. We 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 have considered um, the, the land that is currently for sale on Champions Business Park. But it doesn't have uh, access onto Arrow Brook Road. So its access is actually very close. Oh, yeah. 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 Not, not that the land for the sale doesn't have access to it. Uh, There's lots of empty units on that site. Yeah. Yeah. NHS yeah. have just moved out. There's an entrance onto Arrow Brook Road, yeah. takes you to Upton and to Greasby and to West Kirby. If you let me continue, the, the, the other issue about that site is clearly that it's, it's back towards <coughs> up the current Upton Fire Station, so it doesn't sum out the, the, the absolute problem about the distance to West Kirby. Oh. On Pump Lane, um, the old RAF estate, further behind, there used to be playing fields when it was the RAF camp. There are already concrete paths in, there'll be drainage, and the fields brown, at this brown field. It's not green belt. Not, not according to this <laughs> <laughs> No, no, if. There will be other sites that are closer in between. Not that we are able to gain access to, that isn't within the green belt, is the point that would be made. We would take. A site on Pump Lane ahead of the library. It's in the green belt, according to what I, I I know about fire and rescue. I don't I've got to take it on trust if if off the scissors. The brown belt land instead. I mean obviously I mean I just looked on my phone now and found a plot for six hundred and sixty thousand um yeah, six hundred and sixty thousand pounds and more, so it's just two point one acres. Which is of no use to us in the sense of this. The issue is, we're all in agreement, I think, around the pump lane issue. As it stands, it's in the green belt. 
therefore we would need exceptional circumstances to build and we can't demonstrate that as long as the library site is an option being made available to us for consideration by will. Yeah. Right, I will be quick. The doggy document. Why is the complaining site not on the only considerations when other green belt sites are? You say you didn't put it on because of the green belt site. You put green belt sites on your option. This is not in the ownership of Will. Those other sites that you see on the, uh, the sheet there are in Will's ownership. So, the, the, the pub line site has, has only been suggested since we started the public consultation. Um, but yeah, so there, you uh, do your research uh, No, because it was, it was, it was Greenbelt. And as you'll see on the, the sheet that was in the, the, the committee report, all the Greenbelt sites were discounted for exactly the same reason. They're on your dodgy document here. They're in, they're, they're in that way. You've made it, it's very funny for me, but uh, they're in Wills on the chef, aren't they, those sites? This is the last one. Thank you. It would appear that average response time to one of the criteria you're based on building your new station Greasley, and you've actually mentioned the average response time with the closures at West Kirby. But I haven't heard what the average response time will be from Upton with the closure of West Kirby. Eight minutes forty-three. Yeah, it was on the slide. Eight minutes forty. And again. Which would be against six minutes eighteen for the Greens we saw. So, but bearing in mind that on the they, that's based on last year's so the, the most recent incident data for thirteen fourteen. So we used the same data to, to be consistent. We used the same and scientifically the same and used the tri same criteria as we did in Prescott, as we've done here, and as we do in Allen. And we just used the most up to date figures. What about eight what? minutes forty three? How do you get to Morton? Same, same as we do now. How do you get to Morton? It would be longer from Greasby than it is that's from right. Well, yeah, that's right. We will increase response so Morton times. Lose out. Yeah, there's nothing we can do where people don't. don't they would lose West out West West less than uh, yeah, West Kirby. They would lose out less than West Kirby. No, no, I've already said no. I've already said no. I'll, I've I'll, I'll said no. speak to the Jack. I think we should all speak outside. He'll speak outside. It's, it's a nine o'clock closure and yeah. we said that at the beginning. Organise another meeting then. <laughs> With the council. Who keeps coming. Okay, thank you very much for your attendance and uh, you can be assured that your views will be reported. Don't believe you.